Hey guys, I'm Evan. Welcome to Country View Acres. So in three days from now, the steers, we're going to go pick up feeder steers and they're going to be in this pasture. So we've got to get everything secure so that they can't get out. So the first thing is, is this fence. We put this brace up the other day and this woven wire fence is a little short. So we're going to have to splice on a few feet so that we can stretch it, tie it off to this post. We've got two gates that we need to hang and then we need to get all the fence secured to the post, probably set up their water trough and just get everything ready for the steers for when they arrive. So I'm gonna go ahead and start splicing this fence. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off so I got a, a full four inches of wire sticking out here to be able to splice this. I think I'm just gonna use high tensile crimps to, to splice it. So the manufacturer suggests using three of these crimps when you do a splice, so. We'll go ahead and slide three on each one of these wires. So the top wire is 10 gauge. It actually takes a bigger crimp, and I think these are 12 or 12 and a half gauge. And you can see it's a smaller crimp, but it's gonna take quite a few of these to splice this fence. All right, there's the first crimp. So now I just gotta keep on going down to the bottom. All right, I just finished splicing the fence. I did screw up one spot. I got to crimping and I forgot to slide this section together. So I'm about an inch wider or at least a half inch wider on this one. So um, not perfect, but I think I'll get it to tighten up good enough. All right, I'm all set up and ready to start stretching this fence. But this fence was up before. You know, it was up just temporarily and it never really looked that great, but it is stapled to the wooden posts and it is tied to the T-posts at least once, maybe twice. We didn't completely tie it to the post because we knew it was just for one year. And I need to go down, undo all of those ties and staples, get it all freed up so it'll just, you know, stretch properly. So today I'm just using these Gripple T-clips to be able to tie it off to the post. And then once I get it tight, I'll bend it backwards. And then I'll just cut it off. All right, I've got the fence all tied off and I think I'm ready to release the tension on it. But I wanna show you one thing first. So at the beginning, this post was leaning about a half inch out at the top. And now that I've tensioned all this up and stretched all the fence, the post has actually pulled this direction with the forces. And you can look down here at the ground and you can see we got about a half inch gap down there while, while this first post shifted. Now, if we look at the second post, we look at it, it's just barely got a little spot right there. It's it's maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe three sixteenths of an inch. This post didn't really shift. It just basically pulled this post in tighter to that one is the way I see it. And so now we've got the brace with all the force on there and we'll go ahead and release this and we'll see if that springs back any at all. 
but uh, this is the reason I do this is because when you tie off a fence all that force is going to shift that brace and we've shifted it before we tied it off so when we release this this really shouldn't hardly move at all so we got the camera set up so you can see this post and then we'll maybe we can tell with the camera whether this moves at all but hopefully when we release this there's there's very little pressure is taken up and it stays nice and tight Oh, this bottom one's really tight. All right, it's loose. Bottom one's completely released. All right, the top one's released. I don't know if we'll see it in the camera, but the bottom gap down there is still exactly the same. There's still all that pressure on this fence brace. So it's probably hard to tell on camera, but going that direction, it actually slowly goes downhill. So the bottom of the fence is pressing against the ground right now. So we're gonna go ahead, lift it up. Um, since I'm alone, I'll probably use the tractor to help lift it up and then we'll get it stapled to all the wooden posts first and then we'll tie it off to all the metal posts. It's gonna be pretty hard to try to hold it up and staple it at the same time. So that's why we use the tractor. I think I pulled something. All right, I've got the fence stapled down to all the posts. I've got it tied if in a few places, one or two times to each T-post. I still need to come back and, and do a little bit more securing it to the T-post. But I went ahead and I did this other side that we did the other day too. So, so I think the fence is, is good enough for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start hanging gates. So that new gate, that went really well. It's all installed. Everything ended up being perfectly level in that spot. Now the gate that I broke off is leaning up here against the fence. And this goes between these two posts here. And this is going uphill probably at least a foot in height difference. So I, I struggled to try to get this to work right last time. And uh, I think what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna just try to hang it level and we'll come in here and we'll fill up this area with dirt and just try to level off the ground to fill up the gap at the bottom. I think that's what I'm gonna try to do. So let's give it a shot. Well, I bent this up a little bit too, so I'm gonna go ahead and just hang it the way it is. I don't, it's just not perfectly straight, but I think the, I think the gate's gonna work fine. Go ahead and slap a level on here. So to be level, it has to be, oh my goodness, it has to be that high to be level. That's over a foot off the ground. That is crazy. I don't know if we'll get it that far. If I can just try to put the gate where it's 
level with the top of this post, it still is not level. But it may look better. If I go level, this gate's going to be four inches above this post. So I don't think I'm going to go perfectly level. We're just going to try to go with what looks good, I guess. Well, there it doesn't look too bad. You can't really tell it's not perfectly level. Man, we got a huge gap under here, almost 11 inches. You can see where I smashed up the gate right here. It's not straight, but it'll still work. I'm putting these hinge pins around the side of the post a little bit because I want the gate to be able to swing complete 180 degrees and lay flat against this fence. At least that's what I really want it to do. Let's see what happens. Now yeah, we'll see if the gate swings all the way around. It does lay against the fence, that's good. But you can tell since this is going downhill this way, <laughs> this gate is almost taller, it is taller than I am, I think. But uh, it will open the way I want it to, that's good. I put single braces on this fence when I built it and I regret that since I did it. I think the double braces are the best way to go. Next time I start a new fencing project, I'll go back to double braces. There's where level is. You can see it's definitely out about two inches. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of wood and I'm gonna lag bolt it to this post to try to fill up this gap. And I may run it through the bandsaw to try to taper it so that when we bolt it on, it's, it's nice and level the way it should be. And then maybe I can get a gate latch on here. We'll go ahead and put on a two-way gate latch. I want this to slightly pick the gate up and take the weight off, so. Well, the gate looks a lot better this time than the first time I hung it. And at least we got a, a gate latch on there now. So anytime I've got a gate where I go in and out of it frequently, and we'll probably go in out of this gate, you know, five, six times a week, I would prefer to have one of these latches rather than these, these chains, these chains where you try to like latch them back to themselves. These things, I don't know, they always get caught on my gloves and they're always just a kind of a pain in the butt. And I only would, I would only leave those chains I think on the gates that we only operate a few times a year. So anyway, it's looking good, but I've got a huge gap still underneath here, 11 inch gap on this end. And that is a big enough gap that a baby sheep or a baby goat or anything could just crawl in and out of this. And then we don't want that to happen. So we'll go grab the tractor. We'll start building this up with dirt, see if we can get that gap closed up.
Well, that looks a lot better. It's still got a little bit of a gap, but it's only four or five inches now, not 11. So I think we're pretty much ready for steers. Well, I think the only thing I got left now is I just got to get the water trough in here and filled up and we're ready for steers. So you can see there's still, there's plenty of grass here. It's actually been needing to be eight because it's all this fescue is going to seed. So um, we'll see how it does. There's plenty here. It's a little overgrown, but uh, I think we're ready for steers in three days. So that's good. I actually took work off today. I haven't been able to take vacation for since like April. We've been so busy at work, they haven't let anybody take vacation. So finally, this is the first week I've been able to take off an extra day, try to get stuff ready. So took the day off just to get ready for the steers. And then next week, I'm actually taking the whole week off. So hoping to get a lot of stuff done over the next week or so. But uh, I think that's gonna be it for this video. We are officially ready for steers and that'll be coming up in one of the next videos. So thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one.